What's up you guys? Today I'm going to be presenting to you the top five alternatives to one of the most iconic watches of all time, the Rolex Submariner. So let's get right into it. So the Rolex Submariner was initially introduced back in 1953. It was one of the very first dive watches on the market featuring an oyster case, a rotating bezel, as well as Rolex's diving system with the rubber gasket in the crown. This was actually something that was patented really by the first uh, dive watch being the Blancpain 50 Fathoms. And Rolex to a certain extent kind of copied this ingenuity to ultimately allow for their watch, the Rolex Submariner, to be water resistant enough to go diving with it. So the Rolex Submariner itself has a really interesting history in that it was used by a number of diving brigades, but not to mention the fact that it created the offshoot of it, namely the Sea Dweller, which was later used by a very famous diving company called Comex. And this has a really interesting history to it in the race for ultimately becoming that dive watch for Comex between Omega and Rolex, Rolex eventually winning out in the end. This is a topic I'd actually love to cover and give you guys a little bit more history and knowledge about in an upcoming video so stay tuned for that. So given its iconic status, the Rolex Submariner has a number of alternatives on the market. And really, I think you can't go wrong with any dive watch alternative uh, that you may choose. But I feel that there is a pretty concise top five that make for great alternatives to one of the most iconic watches in the Rolex line. The first one being a somewhat obvious choice, and that is the Omega Seamaster. Not much needs to be said as I've covered it a number of times in other videos, but it is really one of, if not the most iconic dive watches right there with the Rolex Submariner. It was really popularized in the 80s and 90s by Pierce Brosnan when he wore it in his role as James Bond. And ultimately, Omega has really stayed true to that H-Link style wave dial design that it, the Seamaster has become so known for. So the modern Seamaster professionals feature a really nice coaxial movement. They feature a lot of ceramic parts in their bezel. Even the dial is made of ceramic. And one thing to note is a point of difference from the Rolex Submariner in that you get a really nice display movement. And so the text and specs really resemble that of the Rolex Submariner, but yet you get some really nice and great features in the Omega Seamaster that you simply would not get in the Rolex Submariner overall. Omega has also made a number of really nice Omega Seamaster offshoots, one of them being the Seamaster Heritage, which they just released actually last year. And I think it's a really well done watch. Again, one that I've covered in past videos, so I'm not gonna talk too much in depth about, but ultimately I feel it is an amazing substitute to the Rolex Submariner. <laughs> The second alternative I want to choose for the Rolex Submariner is something a little bit different off the beaten path, and that is the Breguet Marine Reference 5817, a watch that I feel is actually really criminally underrated in today's market, just because the amount of detail that goes into this watch. First and foremost, I want to give a shout out to the case, which has a cold roll mid case with soldered on lugs, not to mention the guilloche dial, the big date complication, as well as the incredible finishing of the movement and the guilloche on the rotor. Now this is a watch that comes in approximately at 39 millimeters, but given the really long lugs, it actually wears probably closer to a 42 millimeter watch. So it is something to take note of. But overall, I think the value in this watch is just exceptional. It really can't be understated just how much value you're getting for the money, especially if you buy it pre-owned. Now, this is a reference that Breguet has since discontinued, and we've actually seen prices start to creep up on these. And the new version that they replaced this watch with, in my opinion, just doesn't do it the same way that this watch does. I really wish Breguet goes back to this design, maybe just shortens up the lug to lug a little bit, just to make it a little bit more practical to wear on an everyday basis. Because ultimately, the watch and value that they deliver in this model, the reference 5817, is just exceptional. This is one you can get a couple of different variations in, in a silver dial, a black dial, even in a blue dial, and you can also get it both in steel and in gold, both of which I feel are just phenomenal values overall for a watch that you really can wear every day and it can get beaten up and no problem at all, it can withstand everyday wear. Breguet is certainly a brand that I feel is super underrated and this is definitely one of those watches that is an amazing value and for those who know, know. Going back to the Crown and its sister company for the third alternative, and that is the Tudor Black Bay 58. Again, another watch I covered in another video, but it simply could not be understated how great of a watch this is. The Tudor Black Bay 58 was 
inspired by the reference 7924 Tudor Submariner, which was released back in 1958. I think that both the blue version and the black version really are stunning watches, perfect case size, really amazing proportions with the bracelet. I think Tudor hit a home run with this watch and overall it is a surefire winner just based off the way that the public receive it. And so it really had to make the list as one of the top five alternatives for the Rolex Submariner just because the design is exceptional. Now, one thing that is definitely up in arms is whether or not Tudor will release a version of the Tudor Submariner. And I have to say, I would like to see it, but I don't know necessarily if it is going to ever happen. The reason being is that Tudor covers enough ground, in my opinion, between the Pelagos and between even the Marine Nationale and the Tudor Black Bay 58, where you really get a sense and style of a Tudor Submariner, but in a modern kind of format. And so, Will they ever release a Tudor Submariner? Nobody really knows for certain. I would love to see it, but overall, I don't know if it's necessary. Moving on to one of the most recognizable dive watches on the market today, and that is the Panerai Luminor. This definitely had to make the list overall just because of its iconic status and because it is one of, again, the most recognizable dive watches on the market today. So Panerai really rose to prominence in the 90s when it was featured on the wrist of Sylvester Stallone in the movie Daylight. And this really gave Panerai a lot of exposure. Now at the time, Panerai was actually owned by a company called Vendome, uh, which is known by collectors as the pre-Vendome era of watches for Panerai. And these are exceptionally collectible on the market today. Now, Vendôme was actually part of the Richemont group, but was later absorbed by the parent company, Richemont overall, in 1997. And that is kind of when the Panerai collectors from 1993 to 1997 is pre-Vendôme, and 1997 and so on is the post-Vendôme or the Richemont era. And that is ultimately how Panerai collectors kind of subdivide their watches, the pre-Vendôme being super collectible, but not to mention the post-Vendôme era where Panerai actually released a number of faithful re-editions to original Panerai watches that are extremely collectible featuring Rolex stock movements and also Angelus stock movements that were used back in the 30s and 40s by Panerai uh, when they were actually supplying watches to the military. So if I had to choose one Panerai from this list, obviously there's a number of amazing options, but I think I really have to give a shout out to their new Quaranta series, which is featuring a 40 millimeter case size. Now, again, that is definitely atypical because the whole point of Panerai is to wear kind of an oversized dive watch, but I have to say it is just a much more practical watch for everyday wear. And I really love this series and hope they expand it. But I have to give a shout out also because Panerai has really been innovating with respect to their case materials, with respect to their movements, now going almost entirely in-house. So Panerai is doing really a great job and we're actually starting to see a lot more traction for Panerai, um, which is great because it is is a fantastic brand, a historic brand, and one that I feel has really become very undervalued overall in today's market. So last but certainly not least, in a top five alternatives to the Rolex Submariner, I had to feature the original dive watch, that is the Blancpain 50 Fathoms. Now, this is a watch really that is kind of disappointing in that all of their amazing editions of the Blancpain 50 Fathoms that I like, namely the Mil Spec and the Barracuda, and a number of other ones that are in their 40 mil case size, which is a lot more wearable than the 43 plus millimeter case sizes that are typical for the 50 Fathoms, ultimately are super limited and just can't be bought on the secondary market without paying kind of outrageous premiums for the watch overall. Now, Blancpain is a watch brand that has really struggled with retail success, especially in the modern market. Ultimately, there is just that disconnect between the modern consumer and their watches overall. And I think it is in part because they just don't make watches that are for the mass consumer. And those that ultimately are, well, they limit them so much that they end up selling to the same 100 to 200 customers every single year that they sell to. And so they never really expand or broaden their customer base. I think it's a failing strategy. It just makes no sense overall, especially because because ultimately you need to build your customer base. And if you're limiting every single one of your best watches in limited batches, limited releases that nobody can ever get, really it creates a frustration with the customer that to be honest, really turns us off from the get-go from ever purchasing a Blancpain watch. Now that's not to say their watches aren't fantastic, aren't a great value, and aren't worth your respect and attention, but it just really disappoints me the fact that Blancpain chooses this route where they basically limit every nice watch that people want to buy and ultimately make them inaccessible to the average consumer. I think Blancpain really needs to alter their retail strategy if they want to witness more success. 
Featuring a rotating bezel, of course, that amazing diving system with the rubber gasket in the actual crown. It is an amazing feature and really one that can be underrated and overlooked, just given the fact that it was later actually used by Rolex themselves in the Submariner. So ultimately, it's one of the most iconic dive watches. Again, one that you can get a ton of variation of, but I really wish Blancpain would alter their strategy and make those more limited releases available to the general public. Guys, those are my top five alternatives to the Rolex Submariner. But again, that doesn't mean this is the end all be all. There's a number of great watches, namely the Breitling Super Ocean, even the Super Ocean Heritage. And of course, I would love as well the IWC dive watches that I hope they actually bring back and redesign and make them in newer formats to ultimately modernize the line and freshen it up so that ultimately IWC will release a very competitive offering. Again, guys, I'd love to hear your suggestions down in the comments below. Let me know what are your top five alternatives to the Rolex Submariner. And of course, guys, please be sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more videos in the future. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.